Sonny John Moore was born on January 15, 1988 in Los Angeles, California. He was adopted at birth by family friends of his biological parents, but he didn't find this out until he was 16 when he was confused for another child of this family friend at a grocery store. He reportedly hasn't spoken to his biological mother in years. He spent the first two years of his life living in the Highland Park neighborhood of Los Angeles, but he moved to the Forest Hill neighborhood of San Francisco when he was two, where he attended elementary school. During his summers at the ages of 9 and 10, he attended a boarding school in the Mojave Desert in Las Vegas, and there was actually a pony that he would take care of and feed every morning while at the school. He even had to clean up its poop. After each summer in boarding school, he would go back to Northern California, but when he was 12, his family moved back to Los Angeles, where he's been living ever since, and he now owns multiple properties in the area. Both of his adopted parents were Scientologists, so at one point they enrolled him in a private school specializing in the arts that used some of L. Ron Hubbard's teachings. For those of you that don't know, L. Ron Hubbard was the founder of Scientology. To be clear, Skrillex is not a member of Scientology himself. Sonny was bullied at this school, so his parents decided to homeschool him at the age of 14. When he was 16, he dropped out of school because he was frustrated being surrounded by people who weren't being creative. In his own words, I left school at 16 just because it wasn't that big of a deal to me at that point in my life. Sonny was interested in music from a young age. He grew up playing guitar and he had a black Les Paul studio. The first albums he ever bought were Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar and Nine Inch Nails' Broken EP. When he was a teenager, he would attend punk concerts in the Mexican-American localities of South and East Los Angeles, and he later started going to electro house clubs in downtown Los Angeles. He was exposed to electronic music from a young age, listening to Aphex Twin and Square Pusher around the age of 12, and he started producing when he was 13 using Fruity Loops, which is now known as FL Studio, but these days he uses Ableton. When he was 16, he contacted Matt Good of From First to Last about playing guitar for them, but somehow he ended up being their lead singer instead. During his time with the band, they played on the Vans Warp Tour and got to open for Fall Out Boy. He was a part of two album releases during his time with the band, the 2004 album Dear Diary My Teen Angst Has a Body Count, as well as the 2006 album Heroin. He was with the band for three years, but he eventually started suffering from vocal cord problems, ultimately needing surgery, which led to his decision to leave the band. Their last show with Sonny as an official member was at the House of Blues in Orlando while opening for a Treyu, though he did reunite with his former bandmates for a performance in 2017 at Emo Night in Los Angeles. Los Angeles! as well as the 2019 Buku Fest in New Orleans. After his departure from the band, Sonny embarked on a mission to become a solo artist, and he released his first solo project, The Bells EP. He self-released the album online under his real name, Sonny Moore. This body of work marked the beginning of his merge into a more electronic lane, though it's much more mellow than his early Skrillex releases, and his vocals are the main focus of each track, rather than the production. For his first ever solo live show performing under the name Sonny Moore, he played alongside a harpist. During this time, he went on the second annual Alternative Press Tour alongside Major bands such as All Time Low and Forever the Sickest Kids. In 2008, after the release of Bells, he started up a new band by the name Sonny and the Blood Monkeys, and he landed a deal with Atlantic Records. He did some shows in LA with the band, and he also went on tour with Hollywood Undead, as well as a European tour with Chiodos, where he would actually have to DJ because it was too expensive to bring the band along with him. I'm just doing a DJ set now, just because, um, you know, the label decided that they wanted to wait. Uh, uh, after I had like a release, my EP, out before I came over with the whole band because it's pretty expensive to come over here. In 2009, he released his final body of work as Sonny Moore, the Gypsy Hook EP. During his time working under the name Sonny Moore, he had started up a side project called Twips, which shows traces of the early Skrillex sound. He released music online under the alias, but it never really got much traction. Around 2008, he began performing at clubs around LA under the name Skrillex, which was a nickname his friends had given him. They called him various versions of the name, such as Skrill and Skrilly, as well as Skrillex, and he even made his AOL screen name Skrillex before he even started the project. In the summer of 2010, he released his first body of work under the name Skrillex, 
the My Name is Skrillex EP, which was available as a free download. That summer, he worked with Bring Me the Horizon on their third studio album, There's a Hell, Believe Me I've Seen It, There's a Heaven, Let's Keep It a Secret, where he did some programming and vocals. In October of 2010, he released his Scary Monsters and Nice Sprite EP on Dead Mouse's label Mousetrap, and he went on a nationwide tour with Dead Mouse. In 2011, Skrillex kicked off a tour with support from Zed and Porter Robinson, which is really just insane to think about. The tour actually came through my hometown, which is a place that hardly ever gets electronic shows, even to this day, but unfortunately I was too young at the time to get in, and that honestly still kind of bumps me out when I think about it. 2011 was Skrillex's breakout year with massive releases like Reptile's theme for Mortal Kombat and his remix of Benny Benassi's Cinema, which won a Grammy for Best Remixed Recording. And the Grammy goes to uh, Sonny Moore for Cinema Skrillex Remix. Um, this is really crazy for me, man. Just a year and a half ago, I was, I was making that song in my bedroom. Um, I was actually living in an illegal warehouse space in downtown LA uh, that didn't have a, uh, uh, you know, a living zone, and uh, we got kicked out, and I made that song and with a blown speaker. And uh... The song sat on the iTunes dance chart for six months, and even Kanye West was a major fan of the song, claiming it was one of the greatest works of art ever made. The song also got a placement in an advertisement for the WWE. In 2011, we also got the follow-up to his Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites EP, the More Monsters and Sprites EP, which contained the popular song First of the Year, Equinox, which featured a sample of his 2008 Sonny Moore song, Equinox, where he utilized reversed vocal chops from the original recording. This year also brought about the release of the Korn album that Skrillex was featured on, and at the end of the year he released his first album, Bangarang, which contains what is arguably his most recognizable song, Bangarang. This song was honestly everywhere when it first came out. I remember watching ESPN on Saturday mornings and seeing an X Games commercial that featured the track. This was the year that Skrillex also started his record label, Ausla. During his rise to fame in 2011, a rumor started spreading on Twitter that he had died in a freak yachting accident in Bermuda, with the hashtag RI IP Skrillex trending on the platform. That same year, he also lost an entire unreleased album because his laptop was stolen from his hotel room in Milan. Another interesting fact regarding unreleased music of his is that Atlantic Records owns three albums worth of his unreleased music from around 2009. They wouldn't release it because they thought it was too experimental, and chances are no one will ever get to hear this music. Another random fact is that in 2012, the band Electric Valentine released a song titled Girl You Got Skrillex Hair, alluding to his famous haircut that was shaved on one side. Skrillex's rocket ship to stardom didn't slow down in 2012 either. That year he released his massive collab with ASAP Rocky, Wild for the Night, his Cascade collab Lick It, and another single with Korn named Chaos Lives in Everything, as well as his track with Damian Marley, Make It Bundam. That song was originally an instrumental called Rude Boy Bass, but he ended up putting the acapella of Marley's Welcome to Jamrock over it. He sent the new track to Marley, and instead of releasing it as a Welcome to Jamrock remix, Marley recorded new vocals to the instrumental, and it became Make It Bundam. London. This song even made it onto the video game Far Cry 3. At the 2012 Grammy Awards, Skrillex received a total of five Grammy nominations, winning three of them. He was nominated as Best New Artist, Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites was nominated for Best Dance Recording, and the EP was nominated for Best Dance Slash Electronica Album. His previously mentioned Cinema Remix was nominated for Best Remixed Recording, and his first of the year Equinox Music Video was nominated for Best Short Form Music Video. He brought home the wins for Best Dance Recording and Album, as well as the Best Remix. At the award show, Dead Mouse wore a t-shirt with Skrillex's personal phone number on it for the entire world to see. His phone was blowing up at the award show and obviously he had to change his number. Definitely a dick move from Dead Mouse. In 2012, Skrillex made a cameo in the animated movie Wreck-It Ralph and he composed the track Bug Hunt that can be found on the soundtrack. He's actually said before that being in the movie meant way more to him than any of his Grammy wins. This year he also got to collaborate with The Doors for the Hyundai Regeneration Project, and Ray Manzarek and Robbie Krieger's children were stoked that their dads got to work with Skrillex because they were huge fans. We also got to hear some major remixes from Skrillex around this time, such as his remix of Nero's Promises, his remix of Avicii's Levels, and some other ones like his remix of Monsta's Holdin' On and LaRue's In For The Kill. Skrillex has also done some rather odd and somewhat 
off-brand remixes in his career, such as his remix of Bruno Mars' Just The Way You Are. His body of work is massive, so I'm not going to mention everything in this video, but if you're interested in learning more about some of his lesser known work, I'd highly recommend checking out the Skrillex wiki on fandom.com, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. In 2012, Skrillex also dated one of his collaborators, Ellie Golding, but their relationship eventually ended due to their busy schedules, but they remain friends to this day. 2012 was also the year that Skrillex teamed up with Boys Noise to form their side project Dog Blood, and they put out their first release, the two-track Middle Finger EP. In 2013, he was nominated for three more Grammys, and he won all three. The song Bangarang won Best Dance Recording, and the album Bangarang won Best Dance Slash Electronic Album, and his remix of Nero's Promises won Best Remix Recording. This year he released one of his lesser known EPs, Leaving, which contains three tracks, and he also released his follow-up Dog Blood EP, Middle Finger Part 2. 2013 was also the year that Skrillex teamed up with Diplo to form Jack Yu, and their debut performance took place at the Mad Decent Block Party in San Diego in September of that year. They released the Lone Jack U album in 2015 and it won two Grammys. On March 7, 2014, an app called Alien Ride was put up on Apple's App Store, which contained a secret folder with 11 hidden objects and a countdown ending on March 10th at 6.30 Eastern Time. Skrillex's website was updated with the app's picture on the front page, and it was revealed that the folder contained links that were later revealed to stream his 11 new songs that comprised the album Recess, which was ultimately released on March 18th. Just a few weeks after dropping the album, he debuted his new Mothership stage setup at Coachella, which featured a Transformers-like spaceship DJ booth that actually transformed mid-set. In 2014, Skrillex established Nest HQ, a media platform designed to help out rising artists in the scene by giving them free exposure on a widely recognized platform. In 2015, Skrillex dropped some major collaborations. He collaborated with Zoo on the track Working For It, worked with The Game on the track El Chapo, released Burial with Yogi Trollface, Pusha T, and bass music pioneer Moody Good. That year he also put out Squad Out with Fat Man Scoop and rising bass house producer Jaws, and he collaborated with Big Grams for the track Drum Machine. For those of you that don't know, Big Grams is a side project of Big Boy from Outkast and Fantagram. 2015 was around the time that Skrillex started to branch out into more of a working producer role alongside his solo project when he produced Justin Bieber's album Purpose. He's grown into that role over time and he now has an absurd amount of production credits ranging from Zac Brown Band to Ed Sheeran to Beyonce just to name a few. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see his full list of credits. His rapid fire collaborations continued on into 2016 as he worked with Mr. Weezo, Elephant, Valentino Khan, Weewack, What's So Not in RL Grime, Vic Mensa, and of course his purple Lamborghini collaboration with Rick Ross for the 2016 Suicide Squad movie. Here's a funny story that relates to Skrillex's time working on the Suicide Squad soundtrack. Sonny is friends with Jared Leto, the singer of 30 Seconds to Mars, who also played the Joker in the Suicide Squad movie. They met back when Sonny was a member of From First to Last. Anyways, apparently when Leto was filming the movie, he would pull odd pranks on his friends to help get himself into character, and he sent Skrillex a very large dildo for one of these pranks. In 2017, he dropped even more music, such as his remix of Kendrick Lamar's Humble, as well as his collaboration with Justin Bieber's songwriter Pooh Bear for the track Would You Ever. That song never gets old, and I always give it a listen whenever it comes up on Shuffle. 2017 was also when he released Chicken Soup with Abstract from his House La album, and that track got played out by nearly every DJ for years, it seemed like. He continued this new house version of Skrillex when he collaborated with Joyride on the track Again Witta in 2018, which was the same year that he dropped his remix of Travis Scott's Sicko Mode. In 2019, we got new music from Dog Blood with their Turn Off the Lights EP, and we also got a massive long-awaited set from the duo at Hard Summer that year. On the Skrillex side of things, we got collabs with Troy Boy and Ty Dolla Sign, as well as the release of his Show Tracks EP that has the tracks Fuji Opener and Mumbai Power. Over the next two years, in 2020 and 2021, Skrillex released more music, such as his Butterflies collab with Fortet and Stara, Supersonic, Into Ghetto, and many others. Even though we had gotten plenty of new Skrillex music, by 2022, fans were really starting to wonder when we'd get another album from Skrillex, as it had been eight years since the release of Recess. That year, Skrillex was set to play at Sunset Music Festival in Tampa, as well as Detroit's Movement Festival, but he pulled out last minute saying that he needed to finish his albums. Yes, that's albums, as in plural. Personally, I had a ticket to Sunset Fest, and I was really bummed out when he pulled out, so I sold my ticket since he was really the main draw of the festival that year. To the guy who bought my ticket last minute in the 
Publix parking lot. If you're watching this, I hope you had a good time. Fans who were going to these festivals were pretty pissed off, and rightfully so, but at the same time, at least there was the silver lining of new Skrillex albums on the way, supposedly at least. He later came out and admitted that he didn't actually pull out of the festivals to work on his albums. He had actually just been going through a lot and needed some time to work on himself. Personally, I'm all for that, especially with all the struggles that artists are known to go through, and ultimately, they don't owe their fans anything. We should just be grateful for what they give us whenever the time is right for them. But in the fall of that year, when Fred again played his Boiler Room set, we got to hear four new unreleased Skrillex songs, Leave Me Like This, Baby Again, Rumble, and the still unreleased track, Path 5. Fans were excited and hopeful for this new music to be released soon. In January of 2023, Skrillex posted a short video on social media teasing the release of his upcoming album, and he then announced that Rumble, one of the tracks from Fred's Boiler Room set, would be released on January 4th. On February 17th, Skrillex released his long-awaited album, Quest for Fire. The day of the release, Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again played a surprise set from a school bus in Times Square. The very next day, while performing at Madison Square Garden with Fortet and Fred again, he released another entire album called Don't Get Too Close. After dropping two back-to-back -back albums, Skrillex broke the record for most songs on the hot dance slash electronic chart, landing a total of 20 tracks on the charts. On April 19th, Skrillex tweeted QFF DGTC Skrillex Contra 23. It appears that this means we will be getting two more albums from Skrillex this year, Skrillex and Contra, which is a total of four albums in 2023. I'm stoked to hear what these new albums will sound like. I'd love for the Skrillex album to be a revamped version of his early Skrillex style, but we'll just have to wait and see. 2023 has already been a huge year for Skrillex, and it seems like we're only getting started, with plenty of surprises to come later in the year. I mean, we even got another surprise when he announced last minute to be headlining weekend two of Coachella with Fortet and Fred again, and they sure delivered. It appears we're heading full speed into a new era of Skrillex, and I can't wait to see what will come.